Hello, hello. It is Sarah Waggle, astrologer and leadership coach here for Moon Astrology Tarot. Hope you guys are enjoying the Aquarius experiment. It's kind of a practice for me to practice what I preach. It's also just a way that I can show and share my versatility as an astrologer, as a coach, um, and kind of how I implement these practices that I talk about all the time. Okay, so we are here with the moon in Sagittarius. This is, um, I think it's midday on the 13th. Maybe it's midnight on the 13th. Crap, hold on. I can't remember. Okay, the 15th through midday on the 13th through midday on the 15th. I knew I had it wrong. Like, flipped. Um Okay, so we are now building. We just had the third, the first quarter moon square in Scorpio with the moon in Scorpio. Now we are building to this full moon in Aquarius that peaks on the 19th. And we have a wild, wild ride to get there beginning with this moon in Sagittarius. Um, and so let's get into it. And I'm going to show you a chart here in a second. But here's a few things that I want to um, point out your ability because this is a mutable moon the moon in Sagittarius is one of the mutable signs Sagittarius Pisces Gemini and Virgo are all mutable they change right they're at the end of seasons right Pi Pisces is at the end of winter heading into spring Gemini is the end of spring heading into summer Virgo is the end of summer heading into fall or autumn and Sagittarius is the end of autumn heading into winter. So these are the mutable signs that change things up, that, sh that, that can shape shift sort of. Um, and so this, we are going to have this mutable moon going along with a building situation between Gemini and Pisces, between Jupiter and Mars in Gemini and Saturn in Pisces add to the mix Virgo or Vir Venus in Virgo. So um, your ability to adapt, to go with the flow, to be resourceful is going to be important. And because, I mean, there is a lot going on globally that we are really unaware of. And I feel like one of the questions we all should be asking ourselves is, is our leadership prepared for it? So, um, and no matter what you think about who's on the ballot really is irrelevant. The big question to ask yourself is, are these people, these quote unquote leaders, these quote unquote authorities, are they capable of dealing with the repercussions of what's going on globally? Um, and that's really a question you can only answer for yourself, right? So I'm not going to throw out my opinions either way. Um, I feel like that's really irrelevant because what I feel like is important right now is that we individually um, stick to our own situations, stay in our lane, uh, really focusing on our own intentions, our own projects, our own, because really that's just, it's all political theater, Right. The reality is, is that our planet is shifting. Our planet is changing. That's evident by the um, weather conditions that are abnormal. Um, the, the hurricane season that's happening. Um, and so let me, I'm going to show a chart um, that might explain a few things. And I'll talk about a few, um, a, a few incidences that I think might be supportive. So let me, let me share my screen. Hang on one second. Okay. So, um, just FYI, I have been pausing recording in order to share the screen because zoom has made screen sharing with voiceover retardedly complicated. And so I paused the recording to save you from having to sit through um, me trying to finagle dialog boxes that don't work. <laughs> okay, so you can see on the screen is this chart, okay? And this chart is for, um, this is August 14th. This is at about 11.37 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, and you can see the moon at 16 degrees of Sagittarius. If we go opposite that, we've got Mars and Jupiter at 16 degrees of Gemini. 
And then if we go over to the right, we have Venus a little outside this square at 11 degrees Virgo. And then opposite that, we have Saturn at 17 degrees of Pisces. Now, by the time we get to the full moon in Aquarius, Mars will have inched a bit forward. However, he will have already squared Saturn at 17 Pisces. And I believe Saturn will be at 16 by the, the full moon. So we've got Jupiter and Mars dancing around 16, 17 degrees of Gemini squaring back to Saturn at 17 by the time we get to the full moon, 16 degrees of Pisces. And so, um, or maybe she won't be by then. He won't be by then 48. That seems like an awfully long distance. We'll see by that full moon, shall we? Um, and then Venus is a little outside the square because he, she's only at 11. However, it's within a, enough of a, um, it's in enough of an orb uh, so it'd be five degrees from the 16 degree mark and six degrees from the 17 degree mark. But I feel like it's enough that it's going to be felt, um, especially with Mercury retrograde. He's at zero Virgo here. But by the time this moon moves into Capricorn, he will be back at 29 degrees of Leo. So we're going to have that to add to the mix. But this moon at 16 Sag really triggers um this mutable grand cross. So this is what a, a grand cross looks like. Um, and this is a mutable grand cross. So anytime we have planets and points at the same degree of each of the, um, of the, of the modality signs. So fixed cardinal or mutable, um, we end up with these grand cross situations. So let me point out a couple things here. So in December, of 2020, 2020, I think it was December 20th or 24th, um, Saturn, which is now Pisces, met up with Jupiter, now in Gemini, at zero degrees Aquarius. This happened roughly around a um, solar eclipse as well. And that was about the time that the um, zippity zap uh, was introduced to the public. Okay. So we were a year into, or, or less than a year into um, the, you know, the, the, whatever you would like to call it, whatever you would like to call it, the 2020, 2020 happening the way 2020 happened. Um, and so there may be a resurgence with health, health and healthcare situations, especially with Saturn now in Pisces, Pisces rules hospitals, it rules healthcare, it rules um, subs uh, it rules things like gases and liquids and fuel and things like that. So, and now we have Jupiter in Gemini. Gemini rules information. It's a mercurial sign. So uh, we have that situation. So is there going to be some information overload come out about the zippity zap that was introduced in December of 2020? Um, or are we going to see uh, some information come out about hospitals. Um, I know it's a growing concern to me, um, you know, watching people go in the hospital and, um, suddenly they have, um, um, they're in, uh, what's the word? They're like septic. They have a septic infection, um, which I may not be saying that correctly. So I'm sorry for the healthcare people out there. Um, cause I am not a medical professional. However, we are seeing issues crop up with hospital stays. Um, okay. So that's, and this is the, so, okay. So when we talk about the moon, we talk about the first quarter square, the full moon and the third quarter square, same thing with these outer planets. It just takes longer. So Saturn and Jupiter have a 20 year, um, uh, cycle together. Um, and so this is the opening or first quarter square between these two planets. So that means that them conjuncting in December of 2020, we're going to be dealing with whatever happened in December of 2020 until the next cycle in 2040. That sucks. Um, but that's what happens with Saturn and Jupiter. So we're in the first quarter square of that. This square particularly will also, because look, Saturn's retrograde, Jupiter will go retrograde later this year. So this square will actually perfect three times over the next year, 
I think 11 months, because this is August, it, 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 it perfects again in December and it perfects again, I want to say in July of next year, 2025. So whatever happens or whatever unveils itself in the next few days is something that's going to be cropping up again in December of 2024 and in July of 2025. Okay. So that's Saturn and Jupiter. Now let's talk about Saturn and Mars. Saturn and Mars conjuncted at, I believe it was eight degrees. Was it eight degrees or was it 14? Um, I think it was 14 degrees of Pisces and it have, it, it, they conjuncted exactly on April 10th of this year, right after the solar eclipse in Aries that happened on April 8th. What happened around that was the bridge situation on the East Coast issues with cargo, issues with waterways, um, things like that. So now we're going to have Mars square Saturn. This is their opening square. And so, um, you know, there's lots of um, weather activity happening with water and hurricanes and things like that. That's to be expected um, with this particular um, uh, aspect. So that's what we have going on. And then the moon is also water. So it's going to influence these, these things with Saturn as it squares. Now that moon square Saturn will be very brief because the moon moves fairly quickly um, through a sign. So um, it won't, it won't be long, but the effects will be felt because of the fact that we have Mar both Mars and Jupiter um, in Gemini. So I wanted to bring those to your attention because by the full moon, um, I was going to talk more about the full moon and Uranus and Mercury and all that. So I wanted to bring this mutable situation to your attention now to be thinking about it. This moon in Sag is the 13th through the 15th. Um, so we still have four days to this full moon peak on the 19th. Um, but I think we're going to start to see some events related to this um, Mars, uh, Jupiter square Saturn situation prior to the moon, um, the full moon on the 19th. So be attentive, be aware. Um, be prepared um, and all that. Uh, let's see if I can. Okay, good. There we go. Cool. Okay. So I don't say all of that to scare you. I say all of that because that's astrology and that's what I do is astrology. But this is also an opportunity for you to be attentive to your health, to your well-being. It's an, it's an opportunity for you to be attentive to your water, where you're getting your water from. Do you filter your water um, should you be filtering your water? Um, I, for one, in the last two cities that I have lived in, I hate the taste of city water. I think it tastes terrible. Um, so I filter water or I get water from a filtered um, spigot um, and whatnot. But um, it's just some things to be aware of and to think about and to notice um, how this is um, coming up for you in your world. Are you hydrated? Are you hydrated um, not by drinking a gallon of water? And I'm not saying that that's bad, but are you getting the electrolytes that you need, the sugars, the salts, and the things like that? If you chug a gallon of water, again, there's nothing wrong with it. However, your cellular cells need more than just water in order to thrive. You can actually overdose on water. Go look it up. It's a thing. <laughs> um However, but it's like, also, are you, you know, eating fresh fruits and vegetables that have um, lots of water, like watermelon is a perfect example or any kind of melon, right, is a perfect example of a fruit that is hydrating because it's a lot of water. Same with like a cucumber or a um, zucchini squash, um, things like that, that happen to have more water to them more, you know what I'm saying? So it's things like that, that we really want to be attentive to. Um, and then of course, like, like I said, your health, your well being. you know, are you, you know, continuing to improve your nutrition? Are you exercising to keep your body strong, um, and things like that. And so it's just something to think about as we continue to move forward. Um, are you eating foods that have color dyes and, and a bunch of garbage ingredients that your body can't even digest? Um, I'll excuse corn because while we don't digest corn, it's corn season coming up and I'll excuse it because 
have you ever had fresh sweet corn? Like seriously fresh sweet, not the, not the corn on the cob you buy at the grocery store wrapped in plastic sitting in styrofoam. No, I'm talking about shucking your own corn. Okay. I'm from the corn area where it's a big deal. So <laughs> I'll excuse corn because it's just, it's that way. Um, anywho, so it's just some things to think about and really be aware of as we get closer to this full moon pop um, that's about to happen. I think we're going to start seeing some stuff um, coming together, uh, some things happening. Um, and it's just, you know, be aware, but also question everything. Because honestly, if you're a new, if you're a, um, if you watch the typical morning show, blah, 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 news media, um, they're not telling you the whole story of what's going on. Um, I typically go to things like the Epoch Times or Zero Hedge um, to get better or more information. Or I, I basically get a lot of news from astrologers, <laughs> from other astrologers. So um, anywho, I, I just wanted to show that chart so you could see that like we're moving in on a big, huge um, event here that's going to potentially be a game changer depending on what planets points you have at you know 16 17 18 degrees of the mutable signs of Pisces of Sag of Gemini and Virgo um, so if you have planets and points and if you don't know you should be getting a reading with an astrologer so that you can potentially know what to expect in your own situation um, my link is below um okay what else do I need to talk about? Nothing. Let me read some tarot cards and some Oracle cards and get out of here for this lunation. Um, there is a lot, lot, lot to talk about with these transits. Um, so I apologize for the length of my videos, but I really want to make sure everybody's being supported um, in the best way that I can be supportive. Um, and then also, of course, Mercury is going to move back into Leo. So if you have... Um, you know, placements at zero Virg, zero mutable signs, or even 29 of the fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, you might want to be a little bit more attentive to your own well-being, your own um, capability of, of, you know, seeing what's coming through with Mercury coming back in. So let's see what's up with the Star Trek tarot. I did not set up my magnifier ahead of time. Okay. Um, judgment in reverse. This is Q. Oh boy. Judgment in reverse. <sighs> Unfair judgment. Um, I feel like a lot of, of, of information is not being heard or voices are not being heard. Um, that's what I feel strongly is when I see this is, is a lot of people are not being heard. A lot of information is not being presented. Um, therefore, people can't make the best judgment. Um, I'm a fairly opinionated person. Uh, you know, I usually come with a warning label of if you don't want my opinion, don't ask me because if you ask me, <laughs> I will give you my opinion. Um, however, that being said, if I don't have an opinion about something, which is rare by the way, but if I don't have an opinion about, it's usually cause I don't have all of the information and that's what ends up me ends up with me diving down rabbit holes. Um, I want to get a clarifier for this judgment in reverse, but I really feel like this is about like, people aren't getting all the information or people aren't being heard. Um, therefore like you know, and maybe this is back to like censorship and us being and people being silenced for speaking the truth or speaking things that the um, authorities don't want heard, um, which could go in complete alignment with that Jupiter Saturn situation. But let's clarify that judgment in reverse. Um, damn, strength in reverse. I've been getting a lot of reverses lately. I think people are really going through it. I, I feel like people are really um, scared and they feel like they're losing strength. They're losing the battle. And so I think what I want to, I feel like what I want to say to that is we're not losing the battle. It looks like it because 
um, the 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 forces that are working against the light are grasping at straws. They are desperately grasping at straws. They are wanting to have people be in fear. And let me tell you something. If you are someone who is struggling with your relationship with God source universe, know that fear can drive you away from God source universe. God source universe doesn't want you to be scared of living a human existence. You are put here in this time and space for a unique purpose. You're meant to be here to live a, a fearless, fierce life. And But I feel like a lot of people are very scared of that things that are happening. Maybe your relationship is crumbling. Maybe your job is crumbling. Maybe you feel like you're crumbling. Um, and so you know, definitely if you are feeling like you are up against a wall, get some support, get some counseling, get some therapy, get support services that can, um, you know, get, you know, mo you know, sort of guide you through, um, this time and space. This is a really tricky amount of energy to navigate. So take your time, um, and be, you know, be, um, be slow, be gentle, be conscious, be intentional with how you're choosing to navigate, you know, what could potentially be a lot, a lot, a lot of change for a lot of people um, and for the world, the world around us is changing. So, um, you know, if you, if you do watch the suspicious observer, then, you know, our planet's going through some shifting and some changing and, and, I'll tell you right now, all of it's out of our control because remember, we're just little dots on this little or on this big giant earth um, that we live on. So um, whatever's happening, we can't change it. Not if not even if we use a paper straw. Fuck it. If you ever use a paper straw with a milkshake, it's disgusting. I hate them. I used to carry reusable straws when I lived in places that require that only serve paper straws. They're so gross. Um, <laughs> okay. So we got the, um, okay. We got winter. Um, yeah. Take care of your needs. Absolutely. Um, this is where game of Thrones, um, I read one book and I never watched the series, the song of ice and fire by J George R. R. Martin. Um, but it's all about the winter. Um, yeah, winter is coming. I mean, it's it's a matter of what do you absolutely need? Um, because we may be living in an illusion that we're we're a first world country and that we have all this shit available to us. But if 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 alliances in the global scale shift the right direction, um, we won't have the things that we have right now. Um, you know, our technology is is produced outside of our country. Our um, a lot of our furniture, a lot of our um, luxuries or what we think are, or, you know, things that we think are day-to-day -day items that are necessity may be considered luxury in the very near future. So, um, you know, think about that. Like, think about the things that you actually need to have, the resources, the people that you actually need to have. Okay. I have a lot more to say here. Um, and I, again, not to fear monger or anything, it's really just a matter of, I really want you to feel into and think through what actual, um, supports and resources that you need to have in place. Um, if you, you know, to get through what could be a very upsetting time, but it's less upsetting if you've got the things in place that you need to be sourced throughout everything that's about to play out. Now, I don't know what is about to play out. Um, I'm just going by what happened when these planets met and conjuncted in previous um, conjunctions, okay? So I don't know. It could be absolutely nothing. However, I'd rather you be prepared and have an idea of water things could be a thing. Healthcare and health systems could be a thing. And I'd rather you know that and have an idea. That's the job of an astrologer is to give you a heads up. Like here's this, this aspect that's going to happen. I'd rather you know that than to not. That would be irresponsible for me as a coach, as an astrologer, as a practitioner. So anywho, okay, off my soapbox. Links below if you want to sign up for the newsletter, buy me a coffee, book a reading with me, um, all of those things. Yes, you can get a sun, moon rising. Yes, I can look at your chart and say, hey, yep, you've got these planets in that these degrees of the mutable signs be on the lookout for xyz so 
I can do that. If that's all you want to know, that's perfectly fine. I'm, I accept that. Um, and I, I would rather help you through it and support you through it in whatever way you need than to not support you at all. So that, um, you know, you don't have, you know, you're walking in a little blind. <laughs> um, anyway, so see you on the next one. Hang tight. We're all going to get through this. I'm here for it too. Hang tight. Um, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.